اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم So let's move on to the second part of the third lesson which is about the application of تنوین or we could say the significance rather of تنوین So and that significance is all about Arab Now all this time I have been telling you that this or this or this is not Arab okay then what is Arab that's what we are going to learn here inshallah okay so we all know what Tanveen is we all know the different types of Tanveen we have the un sound un and in sound we know the post Tanveen alif thing okay now the post Tanveen alif is just uh, uh it's, it's just a thing that is uh, about the script okay the writing uh, how you write arabic okay it's about that it doesn't exactly hold any grammatical significance or the linguistic significance it's just there uh, for example um well in english we uh, have words such as out of okay which is a contraction of out of so it's uh, well grammatically it's like a slang uh, but it doesn't really change any meaning okay so it's a bit like that so we don't have any grammatical or linguistic significance of the post and wind alif so we can skip skip that but the un and in sounds and what their application is is really important okay and that's what inshallah we're going to try and understand in this lesson so first of all rabbi asir wala tu asir wa tamim bil khair and for me and all of us rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli ameen so arab let's start with a simple sentence in any language okay so usually people say i read a book or i have eaten my lunch okay so these are if we uh, you know if we probe if we just look at it deeply almost all the sentences in almost all the languages consist of an ism or a doer okay uh, of an of a doer uh, of an of the doer of an action a verb okay and the object on which that action has been performed or will be performed so if we have this simple sentence over here i helped him okay so the word i well the letter i is the doer of the action and the action is of is that of helping and it is in past tense and him is the object that or the receiver of an action okay so the definitions are right here just in case we need to you know uh, refresh them in our minds so subject is the doer of an action and object is the thing or the person who receives an action in arabic this subject that is the one who does the action is called a fa'il okay fa'ilun because it's an ism and the object is called maf'ulun maf'ulun notice the lun sound okay so file and maful so maful is the object in arabic and in urdu and filun is the object i'm sorry it's the subject or the doer of an action in arabic now uh, i need to make a couple uh, a little background so that when we do the arabic equivalent of this thing it will be inshallah easier for us okay so just bear with me while i whilst i explain a bit okay uh, about english and urdu so that we can relate the same concept in arabic all right so what do we have in english what's the norm in english i helped him so it's a sequence 
or the placement of the essence of the nouns that tell us whether a particular noun is the subject or an object so I helped him since I has been placed in the beginning and him has been placed at the end uh, we can easily tell that it's I who helped and it was him who was helped okay so the object the sequence is subject followed by a verb and then an object okay now if we we can if we switch the places of the object and the subject uh, for example if I say that he was helped by me then we have to as in the uh, use the passive voice then we'll have to make some necessary arrangements uh, which here means which uh, which means that we have to add the letter which uh, we have to add the word by all right so that's how uh, we can make some changes so the main point is that in english it's the sequence of the subject verb and object that tell us whether an whether a noun is the performer or the perfor or uh, the one that upon which upon whom or upon which the action has been performed okay so this is what's done in english in urdu luckily for us it's uh, relatively much closer to uh, what's observed in arabic okay so let's jump to that many khana khaya ya many usko padhaya okay so the subject is me Co object is us, okay. Verb is parhaya. Then, what have I done here? If I just try and uh, switch the places of these two asma, okay. So if I said usne muchko ya usne meko to fair nahi, lekin usne muchko parhaya. So the entire meaning of the sentence is changed, okay. So because in this sentence, uh, when this me is the subject and is or us is the object it is way different uh, this the meaning imparted bit uh, by the meaning imparted by this sentence is different than the one imparted by the one switching after switching these places okay so what do we understand with this from this what we do understand in uh, urdu is that the words ne and ko they kind of act like flags or labels that tell us where is the subject and where is the object so if i were to say maine usko padhaya okay we know okay however if i say that usko maine padhaya the sequence is changed according uh, along with the flags but the meaning remains the same that I taught him okay so I hope I have made this clear okay that in Urdu we have the flags such as ne and ko that tell us that upon whom has the action been performed and who was the one who performed it all right similar concept is present in Arabic what is that okay so in arabic remember how we said uh, that in urdu we have ne that tells us about subject and ko that tells us about object we also have the same equivalence uh, well uh, the equivalence of these things of these flags in arabic so this un sound is actually telling us that the ism is a subject and and the unsound is telling us that the ism is an object okay so easily put whenever an ism in arabic has the unsound it automatically means that it is an object okay the recipient of action and then if any verb oh, i'm sorry if in any word uh, uh, has this un sound at its end on its end 
then it automatically means that it is the subject or the doer of the action or as we call it in Arabic file okay so let's just look at this example Nasara this is a verb I'm telling you this okay so it is a verb it means helped it's past tense helped now the word Hamidun has un sound the word Waladan has dan sound okay so we can easily say that Hamid is the helper while Waladan a boy is the one who received that help just by looking at these flags the unsound and the unsound okay so this is what Tanveen is all about and this is why it is so important so 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 important to know the correct Arab Arab is not Harkat it is not Zer Zabar Pesh it is the Tanveen because it determines if <laughs> if someone has been helped or if someone has helped okay so that's why it is really important to take care of and to understand it and that's why i spent so much time and so much uh, introductions uh, such a huge introduction with the background to make this thing clearer inshallah all right so let's check it again again so over here we have Hamidun, Nasara, Waladun. Now the sequence has changed. The word, the word Hamidun has, uh, you know, has replay has switched places with the verb, and it is commonly done in Arabic. Okay, the implication would be discussed in uh, in a bit, in a bit. First, just understand the grammatical implication. So we have Hamidun, Nasara, Waladun. Dun means file, Nasara means well uh, helped verb, and Dun means maful. So Hamidun helped, or simply Hamid, Hamid helped a boy. All right. Next. Similarly, again over here we have. We have Waladan Hamidun Nasara. So Waladan Maful Hamidun Fail Nasara helped past tense. Similarly, so we have Hamidun helped Hamid helped a boy. Again, Hamidun helped a boy. Hamidun helped Waladan. Okay, so I hope it's making sense now. And just for the sake of completion of this discussion of why I made this, <coughs> uh, these variations of the same sentence is to let you know that <coughs> the common norm or the actual norm of writing the correct grammatic, uh, writing the uh, grammatically correct or the uh, grammatically uh, normal uh, sentence in Arabic is to first write verb then file and then maful okay so if anything is out of this sequence then that means that there has been no grammatical change but there has been some subtle yet very significant linguistic change for example uh, we often find uh, well when we'll come across a recitation inshallah we'll come many instances when the file uh, when the file or the ism well yeah well when the file uh, precedes this ism and this uh, verb and that is because uh, in this in this orientation or in in this sequence a uh, particular stress has been put on the ism that gets mentioned first okay so the translation of this sentence would be of this sentence would be Hamidun Nasara Waladan. Okay, so the first one was Nasara Hamidun Waladan, a simple sentence. And then here it would be Hamidun Nasara Waladan, that it was Hamid who helped or Hamid helped a, a, a boy. Okay, so these are slight changes and uh, but they are very, very, very significant. Okay, and a very profound example of this is found in. <clears throat> in almost every line 
uh, in almost every ayah of the Quran Talk, and that is in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Now, uh, no grammatical change, but because the sequence of certain words has been changed okay it is out of the ordinary so that means it's not in this configuration but in some other configuration okay due to that change a profound a profound uh you know a profound difference in the meaning or a profound uh, difference in the linguistic meaning is present okay and we'll discuss it at length inshallah at some later point so uh i hope we're done with this and we are uh, we are you know done with understanding this so sequence can maybe change for various reasons which will be discussed at length inshallah throughout now one thing instead of now uh you know saying the double page or double zubber things let's just give assign them names now so the subject or the file is always in rafa form okay that, that is how we call it and that subject is the unsound or it is in the rafa form or rafa state or rafa configuration all right just choose whichever you want to so, and the unform is for the object and this name is nasab okay so in short we have the unsound is for rafa state and unsound is for nasab state now what are we left with we're left with in sound let's move on to that that is called jar state okay but we'll move on to that after these examples so all right just go to the examples first uh -uh. okay so we have the examples Nasara Rabun Hamidan. I hope you said Rabun helped Hamidan. Okay, because Dan is, I mean, the Nasab form is in Hamid. Okay, in the word Hamid, and Rabun is in the word Rabun is in the Rafa form. Okay, then we have the next example. Qara'a Hamidun Qur'anan. So, again, I'm going to stop and let you say. So, it would be Qara'a means to recite. So, Hamid recited Qur'an. Next. Okay. Zahaba Zaidun. Zahaba means to go or went to go. Okay. To go. So Z went. Okay. Then we have Zaraballahu Masala. I'm sorry, Zaraballahu Masalan. Again. Zaraba means to strike or struck rather. Because these are all verbs of ill. So it means struck. Struck. Okay. Now Allah struck or gave an example. Okay. So just by knowing these flags, we were able to translate these simple, simple, simple sentences. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Now move on to this little chart over here and first of all i'm going to ask you to not get freaked out of this chart okay because you don't have to remember memorize even a single thing it's just a cute little summary that i found of the entire arabic thing okay so just uh help uh, i'll just help you i'll just walk you through it and just listen to me okay so rafa we know it's the unsound let's learn about its specifications first okay not the other one just forget about the other two so first of all it is the subject all right also known as file we already know it and over here it says mm -hmm, it says that it is the default form of an ism 
default state of an ism what does that mean it means that if for example an ism is uh, present in a dictionary for example if you the, the state in which an ism is found in a dictionary is its raw state its crude state all right where no grammatical laws or rules have been applied to it and uh, it's not part of any complex or simple fragment um, or any uh, or any sentence for that matter all right so it's the natural state of an ism so if for example, the word Rasulun, okay, is present. So I'll have to write it in Rafa form, okay. Similarly, Shajaratun, because it's written alone and uh, it's the normal, it's the usual state, all right. So even while when we were doing the alphabets earlier on, we said, well, we did not say it, but uh, let me explain it to you now. So, alif is not alif. We call it alifun. And then, ba-un, ba um, ta-un, sa-un, ji-un, ha-un, kha-un. Okay, so you notice the repetitive, repetitive um, un sound. So, that is because all the asma in their default state are in un form or the rafa state okay so it's like a grammatical crime if you write an ism without its uh, rafa tanween okay so you have to write it down and you'll not find any arab any local arab any native arab rather uh, to uh, to pronounce this ending sound and uh, that is actually one of the reasons that they often, even they themselves aren't too sure about these, this ending sound, okay? And this is something not uh, that I'm saying. It is, uh, it is something that was said to me by my teacher, okay? So he said, he told me to, while my, during my learning phases, we have to, you know, we have to say these ending sounds. It's important. So that's what is meant by the default state of anism okay so these are the two tiny little points that i want you to remember for the rest of your life regarding the rafa configuration that first of all it is always a file that's in rafa and secondly it's always the uh, default state of anism uh, there's another point uh, there's another situation when an ism can be can be in rougher state and not be a file but that is uh, in a passive voice and we will deal that later on when we'll jump on to the uh, passive voice inshallah okay so rafa is done now jump to nasab form so we have learned that it is this unsound and we know that it is maful okay uh, one tiny little point Maful, what is maful? Maful is actually a detail of the verb, okay? That is, what was it performed on? Okay, so it's like the detail, okay? So any kind of detail regarding the fail is written in nasab, okay? So for example, what was it performed on? So if you see, whenever uh, whenever an ism or whenever a detail regarding, an, regarding a fail answers the questions such as what, where was it performed what was it performed on uh when was it performed or why was it performed how was it performed um you know how much of it was performed and how many of the, for example i read a book okay so i read a book what did i read i read a book where did i read it in the library when did i read it yesterday why did i read it i was bored how what did I read it mm, carefully? Then how much it was it read? Uh, the entire book was read. Then, or how many books were read? Just one of, just one book. Then who else was there when I was reading the book? The librarian was over there. Okay. So these were, these are all the details. All right. And all of these details are going to be mentioned in nasab form. If you remember from the, uh, from the uh, from the chart that we did in lesson number two which was about the classification of words we remember uh, we said that the word 
kasulan all right kasulan means lazily all right so it answers the question of how how was it how did he walk he walked lazily okay so kasulan so this is nasab any kind of detail regarding the fail is in nasab form and finally about the, uh, the second point about nasab is that there are 11 different situations in arabic when an ism assumes the nasab form okay and this entire subject is called mansubat okay and we're going to inshallah study all these okay some of them at length and some of them just a brief description or just a brief introduction so that you can identify that why is an ism not in rafa form and why is it in nasab form okay so inshallah we'll do that we'll cover it so we're done with nasab as well finally let's move on to jar now i'm going to touch this subject really briefly because uh, we're going to cover it at length in the subsequent videos but right now just understand that this in sound this is what was left actually uh, so this any ism that has this in sound at the end it's uh, it's said to be in the jar form or jar jar state all right so that is it and there are only two situations in the in the entire arabic uh, when an ism can be in jar form and we will discuss them at length later on first of all uh, if the ism is preceded by a preposition such as here fi sabilin fi is a preposition and sabilin notice the lin all right so it's the jar form and it is preceded by a preposition okay now what are the implications we'll do it with the prepositions inshallah similarly min means from and by thin means a house so from a house that's what it means and uh, well we see the thin sound over here okay so this by thin is in jar form sabi lin is in jar form all right i hope this is clear and the second condition when it might be in well it has to be in jar state is when it is the possessor of another ism okay so we all know rasulullahi well we, we only know the rasulullah that's how we said because we always silent the uh the last the last ending sound okay so please 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 don't do this okay just make this a habit from now on that you are not going to uh silent this thing <clears throat> excuse me so we have rasulullahi now the word uh, now the word rasulu is not in your form we can see this thing here now this is single harkat but it's still pesh okay it's not zir and then we have the word Allah, as you can see, the zero over here, it is in jar form. Okay, so Rasulullah, all right. So, and similarly, Abu Zaidin, Abu means father, Zaidin is in jar form. So, Abu Zaidin means father of Zaid. Okay, just remember for now that any possessor of another ism, all right, is going to be in jar okay uh jar form so these are the two uh, this table over here actually is the summary of arabic okay so if and it's really important to know the difference between your rafa nasab and jar things okay because that is that tells us whether a book was written whether someone was helped or he had helped someone okay so it's really 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 important uh finally just we'll just do a little exercise i know this lesson has uh, gone a bit long but uh, i hope i did justice with this topic because this topic is something that takes people ages it took me ages i was uh, about i think half it through my fail uh, when it hit me that what <laughs> Rafa and Sabjar actually were. All right. And even previously, when I was teaching this thing to other people, uh, they the 
thing that they had most trouble in is not the structural forms of prafana subjur but the implication and the application of this thing okay so i hope i made this clear and i'm really sorry for the long lesson this time okay but i hope that the point has been gotten across still if you have any questions any uh, thing that you need more elaboration or clarification on just let me know okay and i'll uh, try and address it so very briefly i'll just solve solve a couple of them the first and second one okay and then uh, you'll get an idea of how to proceed with this exercise and then you can do it on your own okay just pause the video and then you can complete the rest of the exercise and we can discuss the answers later on if you want to all right so uh, now this is simply the uh, ism without the ending sound then we have rafa form nasab form and then the jar form so akh mean uh, well technically akhun okay because now you know that the default state of an ism is an un sound and that's why whenever i say an ism all alone by itself i add the un sound at it okay at the added end so it's akhun now the rafa form is akhun okay akhun akhun okay this is not right so we have a khun then we have a khun notice the uh, post and mean alif and then we have the a khin okay a khin so and this was a khun similarly now why and while you are solving this i want you to make um and um just uh, you know make a habit of doing this akhun now this is the rafa form which means it's either the uh, default state or it is the file okay akhun brother is the file in nasab form it is either the maful one of the details of the verb or it is uh, one of the 11 reasons that it's nasab in nasab form or it is either the possessor of some of some other ism or it is preceded by a, by a preposition okay so you have to bring these two points that i that i uh, mentioned in the table over here okay in the table above you have to keep those points in your mind while you're making the rafa nasab and jar forms okay so similarly we have jidarun which means a wall okay so a wall jidarun so it's either the default state all right or it is the file somehow then we have jidarun notice there would be an alif post and mean alif will be present here because there is no gulta and there is no alif hamza combo so jidarun now it's either going to be a maful or any kind of maful or it is going to be uh, uh, one of the reasons is going to be following one of the reasons of mansubat then we have jidarin which means that it's either going to be the possessor of some other ism now this is tricky because how can a wall be the possessor of something all right and we will cover this inshallah okay we will cover this concept so just don't worry just remember it's either going to be the possessor of some other ism or is it it is going to be preceded by a preposition okay similarly uh, now i'll just tell you the meanings of these words all right so that you can proceed accordingly and complete this exercise yourself then so we have a khun uh, khun is brother brother a book mubinun means clear clear and muharram means a place or time of continuous and perpetual safety then jidarun means a wall alimun means ever knowing continuously and ever knowing then hakimun means all knowing uh, all wise okay hakimun means all wise uh, like continuously wise always wise so and rasulun means a prophet bintun means a daughter or a girl all right so barakallah barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al hakim and inshallah uh, we'll proceed with some exercises 
uh, in the next lesson and then uh, we'll proceed to the next concept and in the meantime whenever when uh, while during your recitation whenever you find an sm that has a tanveen on it okay once you're done with the with your recitation just start making the rafa nasab in your forms uh, so we have so if you have uh, jidarun just go on with jidarun 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 okay so that's how you have to do it you have to practice verbally whenever wherever okay even what you can do is uh well i used to do it and now only recently i found out that uh noman ali khan from whom i learned arabic uh, i'm still his student by the way and uh, uh, he told me in one of his videos that even he used to do what i used to do in my earlier days and uh, obviously we don't have a vast or even tiny little you know a vocabulary of arabic so i would just take just look at my uh, i'll just look around in my room and whichever thing i could find for example i have this table right now in at in my, at, in front of me so i'm going to start off with this rafa nasab jar forms with this table so we have table un table un table in okay so that's what you can do as well for just for the sake of practice so we have do run do run do rin all right bedun 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 all right so you this is something that you can do because well uh, i up till now i only thought that this was something that only i did but well he did it too so it's a same a safe thing okay so you can do it so inshallah until until next time keep on practicing guys it's really important that you do that okay and inshallah we'll, me we'll meet in the next lesson allah hafiz how do we start okay